Hello, and welcome to the Focusing Way podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher. I'm your host, David Battistella. Today on the Focusing Way podcast, our guest is Barbara McGavin. Barbara specializes in using focusing with emotional overwhelm, self-criticism, and creativity. Barbara McGavin's greatest joy is exploring the frontiers of the focusing process, what it is, and how it can be applied in daily life. Since 1991, she's been developing inner relationship focusing with Ann Weiser Cornell. Since 1994, the two of them have been exploring focusing in some of the most difficult areas of life. Treasure Maps to the Soul has grown out of this and is the core of Barbara's own focusing practice. Barbara's other great interest is in how focusing can be used in the creative arts. She has developed a process called From Spark to Beacon to help people develop and release their creative capacities. Barbara has been practicing focusing since 1983. In the 1980s, she helped found the British Focusing Network and the British Focusing Teachers Association. She is a certifying coordinator for the Focusing Institute, as well as an accrediting mentor for the British Focusing Teachers Association. Her background is in humanistic psychology, teaching, fine art, and graphic design. And joining me now is Barbara McGavin. Barbara, thank you so much for being with me today. It's a pleasure. It's great to be with you, David. Um, I just wanted to sort of begin at the beginning a little bit because you were there. And I was hoping if you could take me back to the beginnings in the early days of focusing as you experienced it. Right. Well, let me see. Um, I started, I learned focusing at the beginning of 1983, and the little book, Jean's um, book with the stones on the cover, it came out a few years earlier than that. And uh, I, I was living in the UK with my husband, my then husband, and uh, he was in, in involved in Gestalt, and he had a friend of his who sim- who came back from Canada one day and said, you have to learn this. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. Just go and learn it. It's called focusing. It is going to change your life. It's the best thing that you will ever do. Just do it. And so we did. We went and we found the little book, and we found eventually found a teacher. It was really difficult. Because uh, there was nobody then, basically. So we, and and it took me a long time. It was not the easiest thing to learn. I'm, I'm, the person who taught us wasn't a particularly good teacher. Mm. And so we kind of, <clears throat> we we figured it out. And, and it did change our lives. It certainly changed mine. Mm. Here I am, you know, how many years later? 30 something years later and I'm still learning about focusing I still it's still subtle it still unfolds and opens and deepens my life and it's part of my life hmm Uh, can you talk about in those early and first moments in the first days what what was happening like what were the experiences that were telling you that this was sort of the right thing and the right thing for you I'd been involved in therapy for quite a while at that point and I was pretty discouraged and disillusioned at that point I I felt like I was going around in circles and not really getting to the core of what was important and I didn't really feel like, like I really wasn't sure whether anything was changing so I um It was, it was, I remember one session that I had, and so 
something changed. Something actually shifted inside. I could feel that there was something that was really different. I felt like I had hit the mark and something had changed in a way that had never happened in like, I don't know, five or six years of therapy that I'd been doing at that point. And there was this physical relief and release. And somehow there was like a little bit more blue sky or fresh air inside me than it, than it ever happened before. And it was, it was magic. And at that point I knew that I just really wanted to keep on going. Hmm. Could you talk a little bit about at what point in your focusing journey you met Anne? Ah, that was a little while later. That was like, um, I knew about Anne, or Lee and I knew about Anne um, quite early on. She had, uh, because there were so few people who were teaching or who were involved in focusing, that almost anybody who was at all involved with focusing wound up with their names in the back of one of the editions of the little focusing book. And so Liz and my name was in the back of the book. So she wrote to us and said, would you like to be part of my editorial board? She had moved to uh, from, from Chicago to California and started something called the Focusing Connection, which was a monthly newsletter. And so we said, yes, yes, of course we will. We would love to. And um, we would write little things from time to time. And then one year, she was coming to Europe to teach in Holland. And she had a little bit of time available. And she said, would you like to meet? And I said, sure, come on over. Let's, let's do something. How about uh, a bunch of focusers all get together and we'll have a little focusing weekend a kind of a peer focusing weekend. What do you think about that? And so she said, yes. And, and uh, I remember picking her up at the train station at in Bath and uh, got into the car and we were driving down to Devon, which was where we were going to be having this workshop. And uh, we just got on like a house on fire. Mm. We, we were really into the same music and the same books and the same films. And, and uh, we had a, a lot of fun just, you know, chatter, chatter, chatter all the way to Devon, two hours, two and a half hours. Mm. And we never looked back. Yeah, um, because you went on to sort of develop a whole kind of focusing, the type of focusing I learned uh, called inner relationship focusing. Yeah. And well, could you just talk a, a little bit about how inner relationship developed and um, what sort of how you broke off and created this? I don't even like to use the term broke off because it's all yeah. kind of a whole thing or an extension of. But uh, maybe you could just start with uh, how it's, a little bit different. The way it developed was I I was having a problem with, with the six steps as they had been developed by Jean. Um, and the big problem for me was the first one, which is called clearing a space. And I just, I couldn't do it the way it seemed to be, um, the instructions seemed to be. I just, it wasn't working for me. So I needed to do something different. And in order to be able to do focusing, I was like, I was trying to like move this thing and put it to a distance and all of that. And it just wasn't working. So I started just saying hello to and acknowledging whatever was there. And that seemed to work. That seemed to allow, I could acknowledge several things that were happening, the several experiences that I was having internally without having to do anything to them. And that kind of gave me a clue. Oh, maybe there's something about a relationship that's going on here. That, that was one part of, of how inner relationship focusing developed. The other big part was having a different kind of relationship 
with what's called the inner critic or mm -hmm. what was called the inner critic in in Jindlinian focusing. And I did I felt there was something fundamentally off about pushing it away or dismissing it or being disrespectful towards it. That's you know, this is something that's happening inside of me. And so I'm a, basically disrespecting an aspect of who I am, and that felt all wrong. So we developed a relationship mm. with that and then with everything else. So it kind of started with these two fundamental problems that we were, I was having anyway. And, and I think Anne was to a certain extent, but, but, and then it sort of developed out of that, out of these two problems. That whole idea of sort of clearing a space, um, I could totally understand how, uh, if that's the approach, when somebody says, oh, we'll just clear the space, and say, well, wait, there's something in this space that I need to deal yeah. with. It and sounds like that's what the experience was. Yeah. There's something in this space that just simply wouldn't leave. And, you know, I try to move it to one, sp one you know, a, a little distance from me, and it would just kind of glom back into my middle again. And, and it was like, I'm not going anywhere. So it was like, okay, I could get into this big fight, or I could just be with it where it is and have a relationship with it. And then things started to shift. They would move. So that, that's kind of how that developed. How did that, combined with your focusing partnership with Anne, uh, sort of merge into everything you ended up creating, co-creating, uh, this whole thing? How did, how did that sort of germinate? Oh, gosh. I'm not even sure I can answer that. Um, try, ask it a different way. Um, how about from how about from the perspective of focusing partnership and uh, what the kinds of where where focusing partnership can lead you? I, at some point, had you become focusing partners with Anne? Um, at that point, it was it was too difficult to be actual focusing partners because she was living in California, I was in England, and. We didn't have the internet. I mean, it was, you know, pre-internet, it was, you know, expensive telephone mm -hmm. days still. So we weren't focusing partners at that point. We faxed each other long letters. That was kind of our partnership. Wow. And for, for really quite a long time. And uh, it was only, you know, considerably later that we were able to be focusing partners on a regular basis. But I can't remember things like that. It's, you know, those, those kinds of little details, I lose them. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about the importance of that partnership for you? My, the full, my partnership with Anne is core and fundamental. And we're, we're a great team, even if I say so myself. Mm. Yeah, you know, Anne is Anne is so great at um, being able to clearly um, share information and things that we've developed, and I'm really great at actually at answering off the wall questions when they appear in our workshops and stuff. And and we work together really well. I mean, we did the the um, the partnership manuals, and uh, you know, she would write something during the during California time, send it to me. I would work on it the next day during UK time, send it back to her, and that we had a a, a really great flow. We really write well together, mm. and it's and it's um yeah, it's, it amazes me. That you know we're really good together that way. What about sort of seeing what inner relationship focusing has become, and just 
its evolution and its continuing yeah. evolution. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm um, blown away by how how many people really feel like it meets their needs. It matches what feels right and good inside them, and uh, I f- it's. It's a great privilege to be able to um, offer that to the world and have it taken up. And the, now there's really a nice, a growing body of, of people like yourself who um, are becoming in a relationship focusing teachers and practitioners and taking it out further and further. Could we talk just a little bit about curiosity? and language and how much of an impact that has had. Anne and I are both really, I mean, Anne's a linguist. Uh, She has her PhD in linguistics. And I've always been fascinated by language and I love playing with language. Uh, And focusing itself, part of, of focusing is really about sensing what, what language fits here. So we use focusing in the development of inner relationship focusing. We have to, you know, it has to come from an inner resonance. So each moment has the potential for um, being open, being uh, changing to fit what the direct experiencing is in that moment so there is a whole context a whole situation and there is a a bodily sense of that and out of that languaging emerges the the languaging for that so it it can never be really stuck or i hope it's never really stuck and there's always a like there has to be this freshness Mm -hmm. this aliveness in in that situation, in the languaging of that situation, is that what you're yeah, no, pointing I, towards? That's, yeah, I'm. It sort of fascinates me how it it's been created in such a way that it, it's kind of totally non dogmatic, but structured enough to give everybody the tools they need to access the uh, places within themselves to to create this environment for sort of deep healing or uh, construction of one's life or existence um, mm. so yeah that's kind of that's kind of exactly what I was curious about and and you guys also do sort of an advanced version that you've been developing throughout the years called uh, treasure maps or treasure maps to the soul focusing yeah and for anyone listening i've done it twice and yeah. they're always profound and amazing experiences in beautiful places with always often very lovely people and surroundings and good food mm-hmm. and Great so, food, yeah. yeah so but can you just talk a bit about that work and how that's yeah. evolving right now treasure maps we we've um we've got a kind of a new name for treasure maps we're co- now calling it untangling ah. because uh we you know it's it's for it's it's to help people be able to really find their way um find a way that what is tangled up in their lives can become untangled and um it's it's so multi-layered gosh there's there is a theoretical base that is the the underpinning to that is actually the philosophy of Jean Gendlin because Jean is a philosopher Mm -hmm. first and foremost and uh, he looks at how how living forward can occur how living forward can happen and how it doesn't what happens when things get stuck. And so with that underpinning and all of our focusing, we, we have developed a model that um, 
or or whole it's a whole set of models that helps people to really develop their capacity to be able to turn towards what is tangled up inside of them rather than trying to break through or manipulate or deny or run away from you know all of those kinds of defenses that we get caught up in mm. we have a way of being able to turn towards and in we believe we you know and this is part of Jean's philosophy we believe that each stuck place is actually a source of life and richness mm. and that it's that very place where it's stuck where the potential for life and energy and flow and um, exuberance is mm. right there and it it's treasure maps is really where or untangling is is really where the the core the main part of my interest is these days you've been listening to a conversation with barbara mcgavin a co-creator of inner relationship focusing with her longtime focusing partner and wiser cornell Please check back for part two of our conversation in our next episode. You've been listening to the Focusing Way podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher. Please check out our website, thefocusingway.com.